MLKit is Google's machine learning SDK for mobile developers. And its mission is to help mobile developers to use machine learning technology easily with or without machine learning background. Internally, MLKit is built on top of TensorFlow Lite, which is a light version of TensorFlow and designed for mobile devices and other edge devices. And MLKit is a cross-platform SDK, so it's available in both Android and iOS. Since released in 2018, MLKit actually get adopted by a lot of developers and users. So recently, we're just um, very excited to realize we achieved one billion monthly use sessions so it's actually a great milestone for us. OK, and then let's recap a bit, a bit about what is MLK's offerings. So back to 2018, MLK released a, a, a set of uh, vision-based features and a custom model serving service. The custom model serving service is actually can download or upload, I mean, uh, update custom models dynamically without you update your app. And until this year's I.O., we release a new set of features for natural language processing. We also extend, which is the AutoML Vision Edge, for custom model chaining. So the, I mean, AutoML integration with, auto, I mean, with MLKit actually enables the developers who do have the data but do not have the expertise to train their own models. So you can train your custom model with AutoML Vision Edge in MLKit. And in the vision category, we actually add one more API um, called object detection checking. This is actually my personally favorite feature. Be not because it's like we only add one more feature here, but we're actually working with the material design team to come out with some UX guideline to help you to um, define the UX working flow for on-device ML. And our showcase app adopted this guideline, and we open source it in GitHub. So feel free to grab it and try it out. OK. And MLKit is not only adding new features. We actually improve existing ones. So a couple weeks back, we're releasing a new um, update for the gap, um, bar, uh, barcode scanning we call the V2. And we'll show more details very soon. OK. So in today's talk, we not only want to show you what MLKit have, but also want to show how MLKit could help you to solve in some complex use cases in real life. Some developers came to us and said, OK, I have like a, a use case. How can I train a machine learning model to solve it? Well, for a complex use case in real life, normally we cannot solve it with a single model. We normally split that task into multiple steps. And for every step, we normally come out with a machine learning model or some module to solve it. And then we chain, chain them together to solve the problem. And also, once we, we want to move in the whole solution into production, we normally also need to think about performance, optimization. So it's like we really want the performance well in real production. So we, sometimes we have to run different pipelines in parallel so that we can hit the performance goal. That is exactly what MLKit is doing. We train the model, and then we put the models together into a pipeline, and then we train the pipeline together to give you a good performance. OK. In today's talk, I will show you, we will show you two examples with how MLKit help you to solve these this questions and these problems. The first example is barcode v2 we just released. Before we talk in v2, let's see what is v2, v1 is. Barcode V1 is the first, first one of the first version, I mean, features we released in 2018. And this has supporting a wide range of barcode formats. And it can automatically detect what the barcode format it is. And it's also supporting different orientation. It's well received by many developers. So until now, I think there is more than 3,000 apps actually using this feature in the market. Since there are so many people using this feature, we also get a lot of feedback. And in some scenarios, it's, V1 is not working very well in some scenarios. And we'll see what are the challenges here. The first challenge is like, OK, some people will scan the barcode, I mean, when the barcode is very far away. In that case, like, um, the barcode is kind of small relative to the whole image. Then the latency gets increased. The reason is like, in our barcode decoder, 
we're actually trying to find the barcode starting from every pixel. So if the barcode is big, and then find the barcode, they will skip all the pixels covered by this barcode. But if this barcode is small, the skipped pixels will be much less. That's why the size of the barcode inside the image will affect the latency. That's one challenge. Second, some developers say, okay, some users want to try to scan the barcode, but they're not always straight on that barcode. They have some angles on it, like scan from another angle, then the barcode is actually distorted, and then they cannot detect the barcode correctly. Okay, this is actually another assumption we have for the decoder. The decoder trying to find the barcode with the boundaries horizontally and vertically. If it's not that, then the potential has some failures on it. That is also why a lot of like a barcode scanner in the market do have a bounding box in the screen and they're trying to let the users put the barcode inside the bounding box to better decode that barcode. Okay, there are some other um, challenges we have. Like for example, the first one is like, um, if the image size is very big or getting bigger, then the latency will get increased. As it, this is actually the same reason we mentioned the challenge once. It's like we tried more pixels and the pixel more and then the latency will be higher. And also some like people try barcode scanner with busy background and the background has sometimes interfered with the barcode so it's hard, it confused the decoder. Okay, let's go back to see what V1 actually do in the pipeline. So the V1, barcode the V1 pipeline is actually quite simple. It has only two stage. The one stage, the first stage is trying to make the image into the um, grayscale and all black white image and then send it to, to the decoder. If that decoder cannot solve the problem, just we mentioned, like the challenges there, they cannot solve it correctly. So how we can improve it? So then we come out with barcode v V2. It's come, okay, great. So we're actually adding two more steps um, before that. The first one is actually a, a, a new machine learning model to try to find the barcode inside the image. And then the second step is like to, um, it's an algorithm module to do transform the crop before they send it to the decoder. Let's see how it can help. Okay, for the distorted barcode, the input is distorted. We, we saw it before. We first localize it while finding the corner points of this barcode. And then we apply the perspective transform to transform that barcode to be boundary aligned with vertical and horizontal, and then the decoder is happy. How to handle the latency part when the barcode is small or the image size is big? Similar, we're using localizer to find in the box first. And then we're just easily finding the bounding box of the barcode. We just crop it, quite simple. And then we only care the image with the barcode. The rest of the image disappeared. Similar for what, how to handle the big size of image. Similar story, since like we only care of the, the part of the image with the barcode, the rest of the, I mean, the image will not affect your latency. And the busy background also will be cropped out um, with the new model put it into the pipeline. Okay. And then here's some here's a video for it. So for the V1, it wants to angle, the barcode disappeared, bounding box disappeared. And once it's moving far away, you can see the latency get increased from 20-ish million seconds to 120 or 140-ish um, million seconds. So actually the latency increase is actually non-trivial. Let's see barcode V2. So while you scan from the angle, the barcode will still be detected. And while you move far away from it, the latency stay and even smaller. The reason is, like the pick number of the pixels gets small to be scanned, so it's like the barcode gets smaller. So that is how it helps. Cool. So in this, in this example we show, we do add two more steps in the pipeline, we're actually reducing the latency. And also we improve the accuracy. This is like internal benchmark results, and it's almost two digits improvements for all aspects. And FYI, we actually, in the buckle of V1, we do not support the non-UTF-8 um, formats. And for here, we actually add one more API to support non-UTF-8 um, formats. It's actually another request um, from like GitHub. Okay, so for this example, we show you how we're using pipeline and the model together to improve like the I mean, accuracy and the performance internally. And then I will hand over to Julie and she will show you how you can use MLK features to build your own pipelines. 
Thank you, Shiyi. Hi, I'm Julie. I'm also a software engineer at MLGate. Actually, the pipeline that Shiyi shared can apply to more than barcode. The great news is that you don't even have to write to your own localizer. You can use MLGate to do this for you. And this magic comes from ODT, Object Detection and Tracking. Today, I'd like to share an example of how we use ODT to help you to improve your user experience together with the image labeler. First, let's take a look at a real life application of this. Let's say we have a mobile app that requires the user to upload a, a valid form of ID, which can be a driver license. And this could be something our bank app that will require. And usually we'll notice that people often don't upload the right type of document, and we would like to catch it earlier in the process. Well, first, we may want to start with the image labeler. Usually, an on-device image labeler retains about 400 generic labels, which could be used for categorizing images. But for this particular case, looks like these labels are not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is to identify the specific type of this document in the view. And that's why we may want to train our own model for document classification. And this model can be easily trained in MLK as well using the AutoML Vision Edge service, where you will upload a data set of images with labelers like driver license, business card, and some other random images which label as others. And this data set can be as few as tens of images, which is quite lightweighted. And then AutoML Vision Edge will generate an optimized TensorFlow light model that can be used on device for image classification. Okay, now we get our light-weighted customer model, and we, then we're going to build our own image labeler with this customer model. Let's have a try with it. <gasps> yeah. And uh, then we're going to take a photo of the driver license and pass that into this image labeler and say if it will recognize my driver license. No. Others. It means this driver license is not correctly recognized. But what's wrong here? Clearly, this image is very clear and uh, very carefully taken. But still, the image labeler cannot recognize it. There must be something wrong with the image labeler. Let's take a look. Like, let's take a look back at what did the model learn. There are five images uploaded because it's a lightweighted model. There are five images uploaded with the label driver license. And uh, of course, we will choose very carefully with those images with no background. But in the real life, it's difficult to take such a perfect image with minimum background noise. While well, this background noise will confuse the image labeler a lot. If you want to help the image labeler to recognize uh, correctly, we may want to crop out the background noise and just crop the content of the document and pass that into its image labeler. How can we do that? We can have a try with ODT. Internally, ODT runs two pipelines in parallel so that they can return the real-time location of the object in the camera. And Using this location information, we can crop out the content of the document and just pass this little crop image into the image labeler. Sounds like a good idea, right? Let's see how it works. Let's try the first one. Others, no surprising. And then, business card, good. Now the driver license. Awesome, right? And that's what we get from ODT. And actually, this pipeline is very similar to what Shi Yu introduced about barcode. The only difference is that the barcode pipeline is kind of an internal version made specifically for the zebra detection. While for ODT pipeline, it's an external one that you can use for more general objects detection. And uh, um, actually, you can always use that in your code with ODT with a very simple setup. Next, I like to glue all this together in a code snippet. First, we'll set up our on-device automobile image labeler instance with the customer model that we trained. 
and then we'll get on-device object detector and construct a vision image from the bifur part from the camera, and then we pass the image to the detector. And the detector will return the bounding box, which is the location of the image in every frame. And then we crop the image using this bounding box information and pass this crop image to the image labeler. In this case, it will return the exact right label that we're looking for. If you find this pattern helpful for you and want to do more tricks in your app with ODT, welcome to check the free code of our showcase app in the GitHub. It's a fully polished app with Google material design and I hope you will like it. And then next, I hand over to Shiyi. Thank you. Oops. Well, cool. Thank you, Julie. So I will do a quick summary, um, summary here. So in today's talk, we show you two examples of how MLKit handle um, some like use cases in real life. And in the first example, we show you how we do it internally. And then, so if I mean MLKit feature can fit into a use case completely we will encourage you to try to use MLKit to solve the problem, and you do not need to start from scratch. But if MLKit's feature cannot fit into your use case completely, we encourage you to using MLKit as a building block to building your own pipeline, and you can try to using Auto, I mean, Auto ML Vision Edge to train your own model, then to differentiate your own app. Okay, and one more thing. As mentioned um, in the keynotes, the like Android developer challenge is on. And um, the first topic is a machine learning challenge, and MLKit is one of the main tools you can use in this challenge. If you want to know more about details, um, go check out um, with this website. And then if we want to know more about MLKit, this is well, the website you can go to, and then if, if you have some questions, I mean, feel free to reach into us, and we're happy to help. And then thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.